In Kenya, one in five people live on around a dollar a day. Many of those in rural areas depend on small family farms to survive. The Kenyan highlands provide the perfect environment for growing coffee, with coffee fetching almost $5 a kilo, five times more than 10 years ago. Social entrepreneur Vava Anguenye is realizing an ambition to help the smallholder and slum dweller in Nairobi. For me, this is something just born out of pure passion. Having been out of Kenya for about seven to eight years uh, during my period as a student and having traveled to, to various places and, and just had the experience to see how Kenyan coffee is perceived in, in foreign markets and then at home seeing the situation with coffee farmers uh, touched me to the point whereby I really wanted to, to do something for the farmers. Coffee is actually a very lucrative um, commodity. I mean, it's second after oil in the world, and why should our farmers have to suffer? Gujarajan in Kenya's highlands. From colonial times, a choice coffee-growing area. When the price of coffee slumped a decade ago, the small growers gave up, falling back on their tiny plots for subsistence farming. But with those coffee prices having risen five times, Vava Anguenye is managing with some modest investment to get the smallholders to start growing coffee again to boost their survival income. Rachel Mutoni is a typical target. I've been having a hard time taking care of my family since my husband died and coffee hasn't been making me much money. At the moment, I just keep chickens and sell milk from the cow so that I can pay school fees for my children. My farm was in a very bad condition. There were weeds everywhere. But with the help from Vava Coffee, you can see that the condition of the farm is improving. Vava's support with fertilizer and training has allowed farmers to grow more productive varieties. In some cases, yields have improved 20 times. In the previous year, I could only get a kilo per plant. With my new crop that I've introduced and the support I get from Vava Limited in terms of spraying and fertilizer, I can get about 20 to 30 kilos per plant. The farmers say they're seeing a kickstart to the local coffee industry. If you assist about two to three years, well, that will now give you a ground. The production keep on coming up as you are managing the coffee. So within two to three years, you are now able to start by yourself. Coffee prices are coming up, so I can see a bright future for all those farmers now. The Highland coffee growers are just part of this story. Vava was keen to help Nairobi shantytown dwellers too. Kibera is one of the largest slums in Africa, where around a million people live in overcrowded and unsanitary conditions. It is here that Vava coffee gets its packaging made. Over here we work with HIV positive women. These are some of the forgotten people in our society, especially women who are infected with this disease. Most of the time, society rejects them, their families reject them, and the only skill they may have is perhaps sewing. So we decided to engage them in you know, making these cloth bags. That way they get to earn an income from them, and that actually goes to helping their families. I was diagnosed in 2002 with HIV. I accepted it, and now I'm on medication. It's very difficult for me, as most of the time, getting food is tough, and I have to take this medication and it really weighs down on me. We are glad of this work we're doing. If we're able to get work like this, we can earn something, which is great. We hope to move our families from a bad place to somewhere better. I want to live somewhere better and give my children a good education. Because if I can get them educated, then even after I'm gone, they can have a decent life. While the cloth bags are for the finest of Vava's coffee, the regular coffee is sold in paper bags made from recycled waste by a group of former street children. 
Jam Bags Designs, contracted by Vava Coffee, is run by James Komori, who used to live on the street himself. Most of the kids you see behind me are orphans, or they have only one parent. What usually goes on around here is we work with the street kids and give them a place to start earning a living. This is where we start our work to make bags. We come here and collect about a thousand kilos of paper before taking it for recycling. First we measure and draw, then we cut using scissors and start folding from the bottom. Once the bag is complete, we start packing the coffee. We stick on the seal. Each person makes about 50 bags a day. Through the project here, we've seen our lives change for the better. The money they get from making our bags benefits them in that at least they buy food for, for their homes and buy some things for school and still stay in school and off the streets. When I was on the streets, I used to go to restaurant bins to get leftover food, to get something to eat. I live here, and from the money I get from the centre, I am able to stay here with my friend. I wish to continue with education and have a better life for myself. Key to Vava's strategy is boosting the demand for quality coffee in the local market. People will only drink more coffee if they know about coffee and if they learn to appreciate it as something that they should be proud of as Kenyans. We sometimes hold coffee tasting sessions in Aroma Labs where we educate our audiences on different kinds of coffee. <laughs> so how does Vava Coffee stand up to the taste test? I was actually, you know, skeptical because coffee has been pitched so much. You know, in the last 15, 20 years, you just kind of are tired of hearing about coffee. <laughs> so, I'm not an expert in coffee, but you can really taste, first of all, between the different kinds of coffee, the distinctive tastes. And then there's a complexity to them. It's, it's really quite amazing. If Vava can carry on convincing customers, it has big plans. Starting with the farmers we work with, I hope to scale that up to about 30,000 farmers by 2015. And I hope to increase the number of women we work with not just in the slums here in Kibera, but other slums as well, and also with the street kids. But I also see us expanding um, in the export market to at least six different countries by 2015, and also locally increasing our distribution. If she won World Challenge, how would Vava and Gwenye use the prize money? The World Challenge not only offers us a lot of exposure and puts us on the world map where We've always wanted to be and to get more people in the world to know about us and what we do. If we won it, part of the money would obviously go uh, to some of the projects we have here with the farmers. And then, if possible, have some of the money in setting up some shop front where we can have a, a small roasting facility where we educate uh, the public on coffees and hold weekly coffee tastings for various groups. And that will at least help spread the word and increase our sales as well. On World Challenge, we give each finalist a chance to say why their project deserves to be a winner. These are some of the faces behind Vava Coffee, and these are people who have inspired us to work hard on our project and make it a success. At Vava Coffee, every bean tells a story. Through our business, we give hope and a form of sustainable income for the various groups in society that we work with. We work with smallholder farmers, women in the slums who are HIV positive, and rehabilitated street children. Please support our project and please vote for Vava Coffee.